Jamie Tars, and uh, this is the first of a new series of videos I'm going to try and do where it's like weekly updates from the workshop to be able to see behind the scenes of what I'm building, and the different things I'm doing to, to make the guitars, and any kind of tips and tricks I come up with along the way to, to help me overcome any uh, issues I encounter. Um, so this it will be more primarily aimed towards instrument makers, but then any guitar enthusiast should hopefully find something interesting uh, in these videos as well. So, uh, two guitars I am building at the minute are very unique and very interesting, so um, I thought it would be good to talk about them. Um, I'm making these for uh, the London International Guitar Show, which I'm exhibiting at on the last Sunday of October. Um, so, I've only got about nine days to finish these off, so it should be a bit tight, but we should be getting fine. So, we have two models, both with new things um, that I haven't done before. So, one is a 485. Empire Series. Now Empire Series is the highest range of our options, so Foundation is the entry level and then Empire is the uh, premium higher end stuff. So we have a sink of redwood with Indian rosewood back and sides and what makes this interesting is it's got a fan fret bridge so all the bracing had to be redesigned to make sure it's adequately uh, structured around the fan fret bridge. Uh, so it's got a sinker redwood top, so sinker redwood is a little denser than cedar, um, but has a real warm and darkness to it. Um, so I always really paired nicely with Indian rosewood. So along the sides, there's this large sound port here, so that when the player playing guitar, it directs the sound of their their face more more easily. Um, it's sort of lined up between your head and the bridge. To kind of be as direct to, to a sound projection from your playing to your ears as it can be. Along with this is also a Florentine cutaway and I've tried this a few times before in the past on cutaways but never been too happy with it. I've seen these like uh, waterfall by, uh, bends where basically the, 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 the joint is so clean and the wood grain is lined up so nicely that it almost looks like it's been folded over um, I've tried them in the past and not been too happy, so ended up having to put binding to run down this corner, but I've actually managed to pull off this time, so I'm really happy with that. Not only does it look nicer, it will also save me about an hour's worth of binding on that as well, which is good. So, uh, the inside of my guitars are shellacked. This is to help act as a moisture barrier, so then when you're changing the guitar between different levels of humidity, um, the guitar will react more slowly than if it didn't have this this coating. So I airbrush this on on the inside of the guitars and not only does it uh, help protect against humidity it also makes the inside look really nice as well especially when you're seeing through the sound port um, it's really important to keep the inside really clean. Um, on the Empire series I also laminate all the twigs with the same material as the back and sides. Um, it partly strengthens the twigs a little bit more, but it also just it's just more of a visual thing. It makes the inside look pretty. Um, and the same goes for the tail block as well. This guitar is also getting a Indian rosewood neck. Um, so I've made one acoustic with an Indian rosewood neck and it turned out really well. It had loads of sustain, really helped with the overtones of the guitar. Um, it had a kind of nice weight and nice feel to it as well. So this has a hybrid titanium truss rod in it, so that's about half the weight of a regular uh, steel truss rod, as well as two carbon fibre rods running down the neck as well. Now to help balance the extra weight of the Indian rosewood neck, I've installed two um, brass pins, 8mm brass pins, into the end of the tail block. So then that means it's got a little bit more weight on the back end of it. So then when you've got the heavier neck, it should sit in the lap a lot more comfortably. Um, so all I did for that was uh, I made the block about an inch wider, so you can still drill between these two pins to get a uh, jack in if you put a pickup into it. So the box a little wider, um, drilled down using the drill press, uh, inlaid, installed the 8mm pins, and then just put little wooden plugs over the top of them so you can't see them. So yes, the neck, as I said, is Indian rosewood, and the tricky thing when it comes to making the neck of a fan fret guitar 
because the end of the fingerboard is no longer 90 degrees or square. You Some companies would keep the face of the head veneer and the face of the fingerboard uh, parallel to each other, I think it would be. So you still have a 90 degree break here and then what they do is they'd have a gap between the end of the fingerboard and the end of the head veneer and then round over the portion here and then have a bent head veneer to kind of um, make that all work together. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. So um, what I do instead, instead of making anything too strange for my geometry, I make a scarf neck joint. It's the same as I normally do. Um, and then once I know the position of the fingerboard, I then actually cut the face of the head veneer, or the head plate, um, at the angle to match this. So then all the strings still have a 15 degree break angle going over the nut into the headstock. So you might be able to see it's got a little bit of a twist on it compared to the face of the fingerboard. And that's just to compensate for the fact that the nut is no longer square. So these necks still need to have the thickness taken off the back uh, and then the volute carved and then and a back head in there still onto it as well. So the fingerboards and the bridges which I have here were made using a Shaper Origin CNC, like a handheld CNC machine. It's really very good for uh, making odd parts like this where to jig something up like this would take a very long time. Um, so I was able to draw on a program on the computer, all the different locations and positions, and then just mill it out. And then on this bridge as well, I've added extra marks um, for the center of each of the string positions, as it's a string through bridge, a painless bridge, um, which means I'll need to drill these holes manually uh, for the ball ends to sit in but they need to line exactly with the center of these string openings in order to get everything to line up correctly. So adding these extra notches in will really help when it comes to that stage. I think that's everything for that guitar. So that's a 485 Empire series with a cutaway sound port. Oh, and an armrest bevel. So I've changed the design of my armrest bevels. This is the a bevel lining here, which is wider than typical kerf lining, as you can see down there. So my previous uh, armrest bevel was maybe about an inch in depth here. So I had to use all sorts of jigs and templates in order to make sure I had the correct cut um, when, I, when cutting away this bevel plate. Um, it was always quite tricky. There was always a lot of templates involved. And if at any point in the process there was any movement, it means the next job is, is at risk of being in the wrong place. Um, so I've decided to make it more of a shallow profile uh, bevel lining. So now it should only come in maybe about a centimeter, 15 millimeters maybe, instead of a full inch. Um, so it will be more petite, um, should require no templates or jigs as, as far as I'm aware so far. I still need to figure it out really. Um, but then it should have a real nice softer uh, profile um, compared to the old uh, bevel lines I was doing. Because all you really need to do is just knock off that hard corner um, where your arm rests just to make it more comfortable for you. And it doesn't require a lot of material to be removed before you get the effect of the armrest bevel. So that should be really nice. I'm looking forward to getting all that together. And the next guitar I have here will be a baritone fan fret. So I had made a eight string all color baritone fan fret um, earlier on in the year. Um, it just sounded great, it sounded really, really cool. So having that extra low register, so it will be tuned to an A. So the low string, imagine your low string on a guitar had uh, seven extra frets. That's the note it will be played at. So it will be low A, and um, for the lowest string, and uh, so it's got a 28 inch scale on the low string and then 27 inch on the high string. Um, again, 
just looking to increase the range of options that are available and give people more more choice to choose from really. I think baritone is a really nice direction to go in because I find that some guitars is really hunger to be tuned lower. They really sound a lot better actually. So hopefully this will be the case. So <clears throat> this is a 514 model, bigger model that I make. It's more of a modified dreadnought while the 485 is more like an OM. So it's a bigger body and it's made slightly deeper as well just to kind of give more air volume inside the, in the body um, to help produce uh, more pure low tones. So this top is called aged cedar. So unlike torrified tops, which are heat treated, so you'd see torrified Adirondack, torrified thicker uh, spruce, and you also get um, baked maple as well. They're all treated with heat in order to get the, 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 the color change they want. So this is treated with, I think it's a nitrogen gas. So it permeates into the cedar, which is normally a Western red cedar. Um, and it gives it this dark green hue and kind of a mottled color effect. And it's just a really good top, really sounds really nice. <clears throat> um, so my aim with this guitar was to have a really dark palette. Um, so I've gone for Wenge for the back and sides. And then again, another hardwood neck with a Wenge neck. Ebony head veneer, fingerboard bridge, ebony binding, um, and then Wenge is in the rosette as well. So it should become a really dark palette of guitar. So once this gets finished on, it should look a bit more like that. Should be really nice. So like I said, So this is the new one for me. I haven't done a baritone fan grip 514 six string. So um, again, the bracing pad has to be completely redesigned um, in order to make sure that the X brace is adequately supported, which right now just be the wing tips of the bridge to make sure everything was nice and stable. Um, I go for a kind of hybrid bracing pattern, which is the X brace of standard steel strings, a lot of them use it. Um, and then the fan braces, which I kind of borrowed off of classical design. Um, the idea is that the back behind the bridge is all very supported with these struts overlapping the bridge plate. And then these two uh, little wing tips here all point in. And the idea is that it will help act like the bridge plate is the center of a speaker cone almost. Um, so I find it gives very even responses across the range. So there's more symmetrical, there's no favoritism or bias between uh, the bass side and the treble side, and I find it quite easy to tailor it to get a sound I'm really happy with. So, I've <clears throat> been developing over the last, I started doing an X hybrid fan bracing, I did a 12 string back in uh, 2011, I think, with it. Um, so I've included some more, more fans, less fans, different layouts. So I think I'll finally, um, over the last year or so, cracked it. I'm really happy with the results I'm getting from it. So, like I said, this is the Wenge baritone body. It's a real deep body, and about five inches at the bottom. Again, it comes with a sound port, so you can really get the rejection while you're playing. And this comes with the armrest bevel but also for the first time, a belly bevel. You might be able to see these linings here are a little deeper. Um, so that means that because the body is extra deep, I want it to be more comfortable to play. So you'll have the armrest bevel here to knock the edge off. And then there'll also be a little bevel just here, just to take the hardness from it. So when it's resting your, when your chest, it doesn't cause you any grief. But again, the insides are shellacked. The inside twigs are laminated and the tail box laminated with the same wood as the back and sides. Uh, and then again, there's two brass pins sitting inside this tail block to help kind of balance out against the weight of the Wenge neck. Uh, Wenge is my personal favorite of mine. I always find it gives really good results. Um, it just sounds cracking even now.
So you get good decay, you get lots of um, kind of overtones, different levels of the sound coming through. Um, so once it's paired with this HC at the top, that's coming through. Should be really nice, uh, deep, warm, uh, kind of mid, low end, heavy sort of tone. Like I said, this is coming with a Wenge neck. Ebony front and back ebony, once I get that on, just to tie in with this dark color scheme I'm looking for. Um, and then once it's together, it'll have ebony binding, ebony bevel, and belly bevel. And should be a really nice guitar. So I'll be getting these all boxed up today, um, and hopefully they will be ready for the London International Guitar Show happening uh, at the end of the month on Sunday. Sunday the 28th, I think. 29th, 29th uh, of October. So, uh, if you're interested in learning any more about these guitars, if you'd like to subscribe, you'll be able to see the uh, next video. Hopefully, I'll put it up next week before I hit the show. Hopefully, these will have strings on, uh, so I'll be able to give you a little demo preview before the show uh, at the end of the month. And if you have any questions or queries about my builds or any build related questions, Pop them in the comment section and I'll try and answer them in the next video. Well, thanks very much for watching. Um, hopefully I can get one of these done kind of every week, hopefully, to kind of show how the progress of the builds I'm working on and different projects and things like that. So hopefully um, that'll be interesting. Well, thanks very much. I'll see you soon.